Steve Malalu, I'm the psychologist for uh, Ospreys Rugby, uh, and specifically a performance psychologist. Um, a little bit of background, I've been with the Ospreys uh, 15 years or so now, in varying capacities, in varying work sort of capacities. My current role as a performance psychologist with the Ospreys is predominantly with the senior squad and the senior staff and team, um, and to provide psychological support in and around uh, preparation for performance uh, and, and the wider sort of organisational high performance environment that the, uh, the athletes and the players operate within as well. What does that look like on a daily basis? That will be in nice and early in the morning around sort of quarter seven, seven o'clock um, for the first meeting of the day, which is the, uh, the meeting of all the uh, support staff and coaches where they plan the day. Um, uh, the medical uh, the medical team will talk about any players who've got injuries who need to be managed that day. The coaches will talk about the content of the day, what the sessions will be planned. And the s &C coaches may talk about any uh, sort of limitations of some of the players, any restrictions or uh, what the day might need to look like. My role with all, within all of that is to kind of be the observer, just to look at how the interactions are going and the communications between the staff uh, and have oversight of the planning process really uh, from that perspective. So in that role, I'm looking at the organisation, how how the unit is functioning, uh, how we're interacting and how, how we're looking. Um, so that's a normal sort of start of the morning for me. Um, then after that, it'll be to break out and observe and, and support the coaches in the various team meetings and sessions that they run uh, throughout the course of the day. So at uh, 9.30, the first team meeting of the day with all the players will be in. Uh, I might be working with the coaches there to help them on how they brief and how they deliver their message uh, to the players. Uh, and then after that, I'll watch the sessions uh, and see how the coaches are coaching, uh, see how the players are training, how well they're performing, uh, and speak to the medical staff and support staff who are on the sidelines um, within that. Whilst I'm watching the session, an observation is, is obviously a big part of, of what I do as a, uh, what a psychologist does. You're watching players, seeing how they're interacting. Uh, there may be some players who've had, have just come back from injury uh, and are finding their way back into training. So you're watching to see how well they're coping with the demands of the training. Uh, some of the younger players I work with around developing their psychological skills. Um, so simple skills like the ability to communicate effectively uh, during the training session. There may be some techniques or skills, uh, throwing in, passing, tackling, decision making that they're working on and developing as part of their game and I might be helping them mentally prepare strategies and techniques for how they can perform better in the training session. So I'll be watching certain players, how they're interacting. Um, and also rugby, uh, you play one week, you don't play the next week. Some players get dropped and we want to see how they're, how they're taking deselection and, and how they're working and how, how hard they're training as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a movable feast every day really. It always starts with a meeting with the coaches and a plan for what the day is going to look like. And then I'll follow through the day, observing, um, following up with players, having conversations uh, with staff members about how uh, players are progressing, uh, how tactics or strategies are kind of being implemented as well. So a lot of sports psychology and performance psychology it focuses on the individual. So working with a player, helping them to look at their lineup throwing or a tackle technique or a goal kicker. Uh, but my remit is a little broader than that. It's organisational performance psychology. So looking at how uh, the team, uh, the unit and the organisation of staff are operating and working together. So as a psychologist, we can help the individual, but we can also help the, the, the level of cohesion and the environment as well. And if you like the culture, uh, how that, that, that goes. So that's a typical training day. Obviously then on a match day, it's a similar sort of process, but then observing the team, the coaches, and all the staff through a typical match day, uh, being in the dressing room before to see what messages the coaches are giving to the players, uh, see how the players respond during the game, half time, see the level of communication and, and interaction there, uh, and then obviously post match just to be around and speak to staff and players and sort of uh, what they call a hot debrief to, to start to analyse how well we've done and why we've done what we've done and maybe what needs to be worked on uh, for the following week. Um, uh, Psychology, a lot of people psychology think see psychology as uh, uh, seeing a shrink because there's something wrong with your head and you've got problems. But the shrink side of things is only half of what we do. Uh, the, probably the biggest side is what we call the stretch mentality or performance enhancement. 
So a lot of my work is helping athletes and players develop skills. So just like they're getting stronger with their legs and their arms in the gym, they're getting uh, better at their kicking, their passing, their tackling. My role is to help them develop the mental skills to help them cope with pressure better, uh, to, to learn faster and to make better decisions in the game. So there's a shrink element to it because problems occur and we don't perform well and we try and work out why that is. But there's also a large stretch element to what I do. Uh, and that's not just with the players, that's with the staff and the organisation as a whole. I think like for most people, 99% of the people that work in sport, in elite sport, I guess my, my story started with, with the sport and started with rugby. I um, uh, was half decent as a youngster, I managed to progress kind of through the junior, junior ranks and, and, and play rugby at university. And at 18, 19, I just wanted to, wanted to play for Wales like most uh, young boys and girls do now who are into rugby. Um, I went to university really because that was something to do whilst I tried to pursue a rugby career. Um, I was really interested in how the body and the mind worked. Uh, you know, as, as a 16, 17 year old, I was exposed to a lot of strength and conditioning work. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to get make myself the best player I can be, then I need to learn more about um, the science of the body and the mind, if you like. So I always wanted to be a conditioning coach when I was 18, 19. And I got involved in doing some basic conditioning work with some of the youth teams I was in and around. And then when I went to university, I studied sports science, or PE in sports science as it was then, uh, up, in, up in Loughborough. So, so left the goldfish bowl for a little bit. And when I was at Loughborough, I, I carried on learning more about the, the body and the, the, the sort of the, the physiology, if you like, physiological basis of, of strength and conditioning. But I also started to get into the psychology there, and sports psychology. Uh, one of my lecturers there worked with the England rugby team. Uh, which was quite novel at the time for a sports psychologist. This is going back sort of 20 or so years. And um, that really stuck with me. Uh, and at that time, I was playing for the, for the college, the university rugby team. And I was starting to get very nervous before games. And then as, through my study, I started to understand that actually that was quite a common thing to get butterflies before you played. And I started to learn about the different techniques that athletes use to, to cope with the nerves and how they could perform effectively. So I kind of took the deviation away from uh, sort of physiology and strength and condition on my degree and got more into psychology and by the end of my degree I'd realised I wasn't going to be able to play for Wales and uh, my rugby career had kind of was on a downward trajectory um, so I thought right if I can't uh, play for Wales I want to be involved and help people progress in, in rugby and I, I've got a lot to give back to rugby so I studied for a master's in sports science and specialised in, in psychology and my, my research project all my work was around rugby and I helped out a bit of coaching with the university team at Loughborough as well and kind of shadowed the, the, one of the coaches who was the sports psychologist there as well and just got immersed in, in rugby and the psychology of rugby then. Um, and after that, I was very lucky enough to study for a PhD in psychology and I looked at uh, stress and performance in rugby. So my own experiences and my own failures of getting nervous before games, I interviewed international players and looked at how they managed their nerves before games and what strategies they used. Um, so I did a three-year PhD uh, at, uh, at, um, in um, Chatham and Gloucester University, as it was then. Uh, and off the basis of that, I really was really interested in coaching and helping people. I was going to be a PE teacher at one stage before I did my PhD. Um, then I did a bit of coaching with my local my local rugby team, Dunvin Rugby Club, um, my, my, the youth team there. Coached the university rugby team, coached the women's university rugby team for, for a little bit. Um, but I really enjoyed the kind of the translation of the, the knowledge, what I learned science on the degree and to, to help other students out. So I uh, finished my PhD and, and sort of pursued a lecturing career for, for four or five years full time. So I got a job in Bath University lecturing in sports psychology um, and then moved to Swans University where I was there for about 13 years teaching sports psychology. So I'd always, one of the appeals to me of, of being a lecturer and seeing the lecturers at Loughborough University, a big strong sporting university, was that they had a day job of lecturing, if you like, and doing research, you know, doing research, but they were also heavily involved in elite sport as well. So one of my mentors in sports psychology worked with the, the British Olympic team. Uh, there were other sort of influences and lecturers who worked in elite sport through uh, strength and conditioning. So uh, Dave Redding was the, um, uh, the Leicester, Leicester Tigers fitness coach. He went on to work with England rugby at the time. So all around me, there were people who were 
academically studying and doing research, but then also putting that into practice. So I really fancied that. I didn't fancy being sat at a desk all day. I didn't fancy being in a school teaching, teaching, teaching kids all day around PE. I wanted to be studying on my own time, but then also up about teaching and researching it and actually putting that knowledge into practice and, and actually helping people make a difference. So that stayed with me. And as I finished my PhD off and started to uh, work in, in academia and universities, I, I trained as a, a chartered sports psychologist. Um, so I did two, two years supervised experience uh, through the British Association of Sport and Exercise Sciences, which allows you to become a, a chartered sports scientist. And then I did my uh, uh, accreditation or chartership with the British Psychological Society, which is a two year period where you're supervised uh, working in industry with teams and sports by, by a mentor. So very lucky that I could be an academic, uh, study, teach, but then also practice and work with teams. So when I moved back to Swansea uh, nearly 20 years ago now, I got involved as you do with Swansea University Rugby Club, uh, taught and coached there, did a little bit of sports psychology support. And then around the start of the 2004-2005, um, uh, sort of got involved with the Ospreys, started to do some workshops with the academy. Uh, it was a young Andrew Millward, was the academy manager then, uh, did a series of workshops around mental toughness, pressure management, pre-match routines, coping with nerves, all that sort of stuff. Off the back of those workshops, started to do some one-to-ones. Uh, with some of the academy players there, um, Justin Tiprit was there, James King, uh, Lloyd, uh, Lloyd Piers, uh, uh, Lloyd Ashley as he is now was there, uh, Rhys Webb was also around that sort of time. So started to do some one-to-one -one work with them, build some relationships with them uh, and I really enjoyed that and I also really enjoyed helping and seeing it, those players come through to progress to senior level. Um, for me that was something I, I didn't achieve as a player. You know, I did make that transition from junior to senior, um, international or, or professional, if you like. So I really enjoyed, and a large part of my focus has been on the young academy players and supporting them in that transition through to, to senior rugby. So I spent several years just working with the academy, and then eventually sort of gravitated through as the coaches and the management staff moved. Uh, moved up the level in their ranks and, and they got jobs with the seniors and I started to do more work with the senior players then around there. Um, and I've been a fixture, if you like, whether that's a good or a bad word of the, of the Ospreys environment kind of for the last sort of 10 years in that sort of uh, sense as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my journey. I started in the sport, really loved the sport, realised that I got as far as I could in the sport and then went and studied, learned as much as I could about science and psychology and then I've been trying to apply that to the sport and help the region ever since I guess. You know I think that's something that um, you know half, de half decent but I think all of us that are involved in rugby and if you, you work in a sport then it might not necessarily be rugby you, you may be a, a you know a hockey player and passionate about hockey or a good swimmer um, but when, when you're in that sport you're part of that family you're connected to that sport uh, and then I know most people that work in, uh, in sport, not maybe at the elite level, but they're in you know, sport development or they work in the sport community side of things, they've got a connection to that sport. And it's something that you understand the sport, you know, you understand the way that people interact, the way people train, just the whole culture of that sport. And that's a real strength. So if you think, oh, you've finished in that sport, and I've got nothing left to give, I've stopped playing or competing, I'm never going to get to the level I want to. Actually, if you've spent a long time in that sport playing and training, you've got so much to give back. Um, it just You've just got to find a way that you can give that back. For me, it was helping people and, and teaching and educating and, and psychology. It, it was originally going to be strength and conditioning, but I took a different path down that way. And I know for most people that play, or once they finish playing, they want to give back something to the sport and they find a way, they become administrators or, you know, uh, performance analysts or, or nutritionists or, or whatever, or, 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 or they go into sort of the more sport development side of things. So I think if, you've, if you've, you're looking at careers, what is it that you're part of and that you're a gut that you can identify with and how can you then make a career out of that? Probably, that's a probably a good thing to say. It's a real privilege to be, to come and work in this kind of type of environment. And that may sound a bit strange, uh, having worked in, you know, work with other teams in sports and have, have sort of been involved in Olympic teams and been to Olympic Games with sports and things like that. But just to come in and, and work with 
players and coaches and athletes and help people develop and progress and want to be part of something bigger than bigger than, than the individual is, is a real pleasure. Um, it's not, you don't always feel like that every day, <laughs> particularly if you know times are tough and last year times are tough as a senior squad and you know we didn't have a great set of results but to come in and work with people and the energy that's around the place and working in any sport there's a great energy, there's a great camaraderie and there's a great spirit uh, and it's almost intoxicating at times um, and to be around a dressing room on match day uh, and particularly in a dressing room after you've won there's really nothing like it. And it is something special. I know being involved in New South here on the stadium on match day, and when we've got a full crowd and we beat the local local rivals in the derby, that's something special. And that's bigger than an individual thing. So uh, I think anyone working in sport, and particularly for the Ospreys, just that, that being part of something bigger and and the feeling you get from being involved in something is it's what drives us in life, isn't it? You know, we can we can all do jobs. Uh, that give us, we all you know, get paid at the end of the day, but actually what's going to sustain you in the job, what's going to keep you motivated is, is giving you that passion for it and, and being part of a, a group or a team or a workplace or a sport that you feel passionate about and, and uh, you feel proud to work for is really something that special. Money, politics and all that aside, if, you've, if you love coming into the environment most of the time and it makes you feel good, then I think that's that's something that you know you found a good job. So for me, it is, I really feel proud to be part of, of working and belonging to a sport. Be able to give something back as well. Because um, once you're a rugby player or once you're a sports person, I think you always, you never lose that. You're always a rugby player, just a rugby player that doesn't play rugby anymore, in that sense, you know. Uh, so yeah, I think the pride and the passion and just being privileged to be part of something, a bigger, something part of something big. And if we achieve things, that's great. And if we don't, hopefully we've, um, my job is to help people along the way and, and achieve in life. And, and that's really big for me is when I bump into someone or I get a, a, a request for a reference for someone or I see someone's left the club but moved on and, and is doing really well and successful in life and settled down with family and stuff. That's, that's probably where the rewards come from.